Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back. All right, this is uh, session three for making the cover of Nascent. Um, this is, look at that, nicely dry, which is exactly what I want because the next set of colors, I don't want to mix with the blue. I want them to actually be separate. We're going to be working with a, a yellow gold, and to make that, I'm using a combination of cadmium yellow light and cadmium yellow deep. And here I've got some of that bright uh light yellow that that bone yellow that i love so much in this dish there's a little bit of liquid in there and that is my favorite medium soft glow i make it myself uh it's from my own formula and uh oh it, it, it it's a wonderful thing uh, if you ever get a chance to learn how to make your own mediums do so uh it really is worthwhile because a lot of the commercial stuff has uh, dryers and things in it to make the oil paint, um, you know, dry quicker. And that's not good. That can cause cracking unless cracking is what you want. Uh, I don't. I, I, I don't like that. Soft glow also gives a nice, bright tone to everything that is used, almost like a gem-like tone. And I also use it as a varnish. So I am feeling a little better. And thank you you all who have been asking me how i'm doing i really appreciate that thank you so much you guys are great it's going to mix these colors real quick and uh let's see if i can get the the view i i gotta work on on a, on a better camera system i'm afraid there we go so i'm mixing them up and i really want to mix them good but i don't want to over mix there we go. That's, yeah, that's the color I want, like a real gold yellow. But it was it needed to be a little brighter than the yellow deep. Not by much, but just enough, just enough to turn it from a pumpkin yellow into more like a, a gourd yellow. And you can see how that looks with the blue and the green. It's really nice. A nice deep color there. That's, that's going to work well. All right, let me reposition my camera. Oh, yes, that's one of my Mammoth Cave paintings. Uh, I am still working on that project. Slowly, uh, <laughs> the books really have uh, dominated my, my time, I will admit. Now, I just want to wipe this off real quick. I'm just going to add just a drop of this to each color. Because we need highlights on this, and I want to use the white for a highlight. And I might add just the tiniest bit of that yellow to it. Just the tiniest bit, just to warm it up a little bit. So it almost looks like sunlight is reflecting. It looks still very white, but it gives an impression of a warm white rather than a yellow for a very bright cold white. And I don't want this to look cold. I want it to look warm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's that's nice. Always check. Always check. Always make sure that you check because if you're just going by what's on the palette, the palette is brown. Colors look differently when when they're they're next to each other. So I know how this looks next to the brown. What I didn't know is how does it look next to the blue and the, the black here and the green. That's where it's gonna go. So that's where you have to check your colors. So Lesson of the day, always check your colors with the canvas itself and not with the palette. Don't rely on the palette. The palette will lie to you. Even if you have a white palette, and I've seen a lot of those, uh, clear palettes, you know, um, those are fine too, gray ones, but that's not the color of your painting. <laughs> it's still going to lie to you. you, you you've got to really check what's on your knife with what's on the canvas that's going to tell you what's really going on all right there we go so i have my soft glow mixed in so that's good those are going to look nice and nice and gleaming now i'm going to put my knife aside love these little palette knives if you can get one that has see these pegs you don't want something that's just sitting there with tension they'll pop out all the time you want something that has pegs going all the way through the tang they might rattle a little bit 
you know, that one does just a little bit, but uh, it's better than it coming off in the middle of working. That that's very annoying. So you don't you don't want that to happen. You know, it, it's little things like that that really make a big difference. All right, I am going to use these little filberts here, and I gotta decide. I'm gonna use the isabi. When in doubt, I always go for the isabi. Um, but if I want a softer touch, the Hamburg Premier is a fantastic brush. Really, really nice. Um, by Creative Mark, uh, they do a very nice job with that. Um, and some people are like, no, Creative Mark, you know, the kind of cheap. Uh, if it works, <laughs> you know, if it, if it does the job, I don't care how expensive it is or how, how inexpensive it is. It works. That's what really needs that. All right, so here I'm going to do the same thing that I was doing with the blue. I'm just going to come in here, just bring in this bit of gold, just just to just to see it's all dark here. I want to bring in some of this, and I want it to kind of just fade in in there. There we go. And like the brush strokes to be showing. Just like that. I just want to bring that in. Because here it's all bunched up together. Which is what I want. I want this to really begin to tie these two colors together. And the nice thing about them being dry now is that they're not going to mix into just like a muddy green. But you're going to get these blues. The blues are still going to be in there. But they're not going to be quite as prominent as this gold. I want that gold to really be the main color here. And I'll bring the blue in a little more towards the center. But what I really want is that gold color coming in and almost becoming dominant in this. I want to bring that around. I need a little more paint. If you start losing paint on the brush, time to bring it back in. Time to bring it back in. And I do love teaching painting. It's something I've always enjoyed. I just, I don't do it anymore. I don't really have time. So at least here I get to do it a little bit with you. That's always nice. It's always a nice thing. I'm going to keep this central area blue. I want that to be blue, like the blue is squeezing out the, the gold here. Just want it to be barely showing. I don't mind brush strokes. Brush strokes can be very, very interesting. They can tell their own story. You know, they can really bring a lot of interest into a painting and you know, some people like to get rid of the brush strokes entirely um, i tend not to depends on what i'm doing quite honestly uh but for the most part i tend not to you know i'll keep i'll keep some of the brush strokes in there just because they're interesting they add more texture they add more layers to the painting and to me that's always a good thing you know, I like multiple things to be going on in the painting. There we go. just want to make sure I keep tapping the brush. And that, that's something else I'm going to show. And I've done this before with, with uh, demos. Note that I don't let the paint actually reach the metal. That's really important because it is much more difficult to clean a brush if that paint gets into the metal. And if you don't get it out with cleaning, it will come out the next time you use turpentine or any kind of medium. And then it's going to ruin whatever color that you've been working on. So I tend to tap my brush into the colors so I don't have as much of a problem with cleaning them as I would if I didn't do that. And I would have all kinds of, you know, awful colors coming in where they don't belong. And you can see how this is beginning to look. It's really beginning to brighten. I'm not getting rid of all the blue. The blue is in there, but now it's not quite so stark. That yellow is really coming out. And uh, that's what I wanted. That, that is precisely what I wanted. 
but I wanted the blue to be there. And this is all very much based on nascent. And if you read the book, eventually you will figure out what this all is. Still want to keep it a bit of a mystery. If you haven't read the whole story, you're not really going to know just what's going on and why. Keep it that way. You know, cover should have a little bit of mystery to it. You know, it shouldn't completely tell you the, the, the story. Otherwise, why, why bother reading it? If the cover just tells the whole tale. And this one is not going to do that. There, so now I've got my sensual surrounding. You see what happens with the blue here? That's popping out because of the yellow here. And then the yellow is kind of swallowing some of the blue that's in there. But the blue is still present. Subtleties. You want a lot of subtleties with this sort of thing. My next phase is going to be doing the rest of this. And, and I'm leaving the rest of this to one of my favorite techniques. It's one that I came to kind of late in my art career. Um, and that is palette knife. We're going to be doing the rest in palette knife. Now, I may find that very exciting. I love working with palette knife, especially if you've got good knives. You know, it's no nothing like having a really nice set of palette knives. I'm just going to wipe off my brush real quick. You see it's getting close to the edge. There we go. Don't want it to get into the ferrule. No, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. I don't need to spend the next three hours washing a brush. You know, just to make sure I've got all the pigment out. And this is a nice, very organic looking pattern. There we go. So I'm very happy with the way it's it's working, the way it's interacting with the blue. It's filling up some of these spaces here. Like this very dark upper area, which I really like. Gives a little more depth to everything. And it flows. And that's also something that you'll hear a lot if I'm doing art instruction. Flow is everything. Flow is everything. If it doesn't flow, it's not going to work. No matter what it is you're doing, even if it's a portrait. There has to be a certain amount of flow to capture the interest of the viewer. It has to look like it's flowing because then your eye immediately goes, where is it going? What's it doing? Without that flow, it's just, it's going to be static and just stuck there. This, this looks dynamic. You know, we human beings look for dynamics. It's always good to understand human perception, especially if you're doing artwork. All right. I'm actually very happy with that. That's giving me a, a nice, whoa, very vivid look here. It's just going to touch up some little areas. And we don't want to be sloppy. You know, even though this is the cover, it's the last bit. This is, you know, the final thing. The book itself is fully edited. Yeah, it's gone through its proofreading. It's gone through its edits. It's gone through all my betas. Um, betas are beta readers. Uh, they read it before it goes through its final edits. And uh, they make suggestions about plot line, characters, you know, flow. You know, sometimes you know, I'll, I'll reverse things. I'll move things around based on what my betas tell me. And uh, their reward is a free signed copy of the book that they helped me with. So these are very, very kind people. Oh. <laughs> Too kind, though. You know, I, I, I want to know if I'm messing up because uh, that, that, that happens too easily. If you have people who just want to make you feel good, then they're not going to steer you right. Okay, this one is done, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it aside. Nice thing about oil paints is you don't have to clean off the brush right away. You know, you can sit there for hours. And then you can clean it off. It's no problem. If that was acrylic, it'd be drying now onto the brush, hardening the bristles and sticking them all together. Yeah, that's not good. 
That's not good. All right, so now I got to think about my light source. Where is my light coming from here? I want it to kind of come like from way up here down to here. So I'm going to put a light patch here. And then it's got to be kind of reflected here on the opposite side. And then I want to put in a couple of lines. So this is going to be interesting. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make it a little more, let's see, you. I want softer touch. So I'm using the Hamburg. I'm going to soak it in the soft glow first because I want a little more of the medium in that white. I want it to be a little more loose than it is. Normally with fine art, I wouldn't do this because you take the risk of it not being quite so permanent. There may be cracking, you know, you use too much medium, a little wrinkling, but this is, this is for a book cover. So I'm not quite as concerned. And I want to put it right about here. Place it. I'm still getting a little of that yellow, but that's okay because that's also part of the color of the light. Is that yellow? Okay. We're going to take the smaller brush. I'm going to come in. I'm just going to dab and touch this area. Until it is the shape and opacity that I want it. It needs a little more paint. You know, don't be afraid to try things. You know, sometimes things work out really well. Sometimes they don't. This looks like it's working just fine. Here we go. Now we have that nice bright bit right there. I'm going to wipe off this brush. Right in here. A little bit of this. I'm going to almost smudge it just to touch the opposite side. So that this looks a little more transparent. Okay. Now I gotta add white, so I'm gonna wipe off the brush again. I'm gonna come in. Nice thing is, is that this white is very opaque. There we go. I'm just gonna pop that in. Now, this highlight is from the inside, and so it's going to be very much affected by the colors that are in the eye itself. Yeah, this is an eye. It's a strange looking eye, but. So I nonetheless, now here, I'm going to kind of give it a little bit of a, a little bit of a texture. I'll bring all the way out to here. There. And now we've got that, that texture in there. And the nice thing is I can look on the screen that I'm using here to make this recording. And that really does show me how it's going to look as a cover. Remember, all this is going to be shrunk down to a, uh, a six by nine so it's gonna be this is gonna be like this big you know it's just gonna be shrunk down so this is the time to get all your fine detail and textures in there we go i'm not really worried about heavy texture because this whole painting is going to be full of heavy textures in a moment you know for the next phase the next phase of this is going to have that Lots of texture. There we go. I'm alone whispering to myself. I tend to do that. Even when I'm alone, I'll, I'll, I'll babble to myself while I'm painting. It's just part of being an artist, I guess. All right, there we go. All right.
Now I can put this down. And I can put this one down. All right. Good, good, good. So now we've got our highlights in there. We've got our darks in there. We've got our details in there. It's all looking really, really nice. Um, nicely textured. That way, when it crunches down, it doesn't blur. See, if I were to take, say, a lovely fan brush like this and try to make it all nice and smooth, what would happen is it, it'll end up being kind of blurry when you shrink it down. Here, all these little lines here are going to crunch down into a smaller space on the cover. And then it's, it, it's, it's going to, going to blend together really well. What you see on the screen right now is how this cover is going to look when it's printed. Now, for me, this looks really big and really strange looking. I'll, I'll give you a little example of it. Let me just pop this out. It's another mammoth cave behind me there. See, this is how it looks to me. Okay. It looks very irregular and it looks, you know, kind of, kind of crunchy there. There's, there's all kinds of hard edges. But when we pull back, look what happens. See? There we go. So that's why doing this really helps me out. Just put that back in place. There we go. So now that this is done, I've got to wait a little bit and do some cleanup and whatnot. And then we'll be back for session four. And session four is going to be the final session. We're just going to be doing all of this. These, these are just blocked in colors. Um, just to remind me what colors go where. And you know, I could always change my mind too. Yeah, I can do that. And then I'm going to do palette knife work for the rest of this, starting from here out and then from here, from here in, out and in. Uh, and that's that's because you always start with the furthest thing and then go to the forward material. And that's going to be with the palette knife. Well, I hope you have enjoyed this little video. I know this one was a little on the short side compared to the last one. Uh, but I really have to give this a moment before I continue onward. So in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate that. And uh, please do subscribe and give me a nice little thumbs up there. I deeply appreciate it. And if you have any comments or questions, let me know. Uh, I'd be very happy to answer them for you. So, all right, everyone, take care. See you next time, and happy reading, everyone.